and if it doesn't work, it'll be okay. Yes. Okay. I kind of forgot what's happened in this committee for the last. Time. It's been a while since we've met. Let's see. Oh, or what is the UX thing? Cannot go to report. Carol, this is a very different board than you know, I, I Planning think Commission. Maybe this will be a nice board for you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it'll be great. Uh, we do have a lot of fun. Less controversial. Yes, this one is much, much more fluffy than. <laughs> Way to learn to catch the kids here. Oh, yeah. She spices it up a little bit. She does. That might be the most controversial part of our board. It's just her personality. I don't know. <laughs> I bet you she lives on the on a big house on the on State Street on the that would be the south side of State Street. Hello. Are you Julia? I'm Rachel. Hi, nice to meet you too. Um, we got a spot for you up there with your name tag, but you can feel free to move stuff around if you don't feel comfortable there. So, yes. Hello. Hello. I'm Jeanette. Nice to meet you too. Hi, Jeanette. Hello. Hi, Jeanette. Hi, Jeanette. Yes, I saw an email about it. Okay, Julia. I don't know if you can be Carol. What's your last name, Julia? No, I don't think so. EY? Yes. Yeah. Hey, Shanna. Hey, how are you? This is kind of like the next market. Please don't get out here. No, no. It's starting not to be starting dark, sticky dark. dark. I don't care where you're at. Oh, bad. I thought it was one of the meals. They had beautiful sunrises and sunsets. Yeah, we see yeah. yeah. so, the sunsets. I can see the walks of the line. We see the walks of the line. Oh, yeah. That's so pretty. Is that your screen? So, where is that my screen? That might be my screen over I just here. So this is your first. I just I wonder if it's or not what it is. Yes, it is. I wonder if it's yes. yeah. why yeah. 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 it's connected to that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if that's what it's pulling out. Where you live? Want me to take it? Can you take it down again? No, no, no. Okay. You stay there. Because I got this up. 32. Like, all my. Towards Little Power. Yeah, almost out that way. So, uh, a little bit. What is that? Towards town from them. Oh, that is. What if I disconnect and then reconnect it? Okay. It's in the screen. So, yeah, there is. <laughs>
Hey, Shanna, can you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on. What about that? I'm not muted. Hey, Shannon, can you hear us now? Yeah, I can hear you sometimes. <laughs> okay, what about now? Are we consistently, are you consistently able to hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay, okay. I think we got figured out. Okay, thanks. We got like all new, uh, a new setup, so it's we're learning it. <laughs> oh, it's great! Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, well, we can go ahead and get started. Um, we don't necessarily have a forum, but we can still go through um, just to give our two new newest members an overview of the Urban Forestry Committee, and we can refresh ourselves on what we have that. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go off the, not use necessarily the agenda tonight because there's a lot of stuff we won't be doing like the oath of office. Um, we really can't approve meeting minutes because our two members, and we don't have a quorum first of all, and then our two new members, I don't think you guys can vote on the meeting minutes from when you weren't on, on the board. So um, the Urban Forestry Committee, uh, we have seven members on this committee. And this is probably one of the more fun committees that you can be on. So lucky everyone that's in this room. We do some fun stuff with the Urban Forestry Committee. Um, so that just to give you a little bit of history about the board, um, I would say prior to 2015, um, the board had, there was a board at one time, like in the 90s, was it, mm -hmm. and then the board kind of went away for a while. And then we picked it back up in 2015 and started doing some more projects. Um, since 2015, we've gotten two grants from DNR to do um, a tree inventory. So we've gone around and any tree that's in the public right of way or in the park or in the cemetery, any public land, um, we can inventory those trees and you know looked at the condition, the height the age, the species, you know, everything about that tree has been inventory. Uh, but then we, of course, had a tornado that came through and that inventory was kind of old, um, not up to date anymore. <laughs> so within the last year, we re-inventoried re all the trees. So now we were able to like compare how many trees we lost in the tornado and uh, all that good stuff. Like it's, it's interesting. So we try to keep up to date on that inventory. As staff, we have a, a program that we can go in and anytime our street department removes a tree or the electric department just removes a tree or trims a tree, um, we're able to go in and remove that from the inventory. If we plant a tree, we put back into our inventory. Um, if we have homeowners that call and say, I need you to come look at this tree, it's in terrible shape, it needs to be removed, you know, we can go take a look at it and then make a note that, you know, maybe it's not the worst tree in the world or maybe it is the worst tree in the world. It's a condition change and we need to remove it. So it's good for us as staff to track it. Um, and our board in the past has been really supportive of like doing projects like that. Um, with, when we have an inventory, we're able to look at um, the types of trees we have in Pendleton because we want to make sure that we have a diverse species of Pendleton. So one issue that we, that communities have run into in the past is that you know they find the perfect street tree, which might be an ash tree or it might be a <coughs> an elm tree and then pests or diseases come and wipe out that entire population of trees. And then you're left with maybe no trees on a particular street and says they were all ash trees that the community had planted. So what we try to do is have a diverse um, species in the town so that whenever a pest or disease comes, we don't wipe out, you know, an entire street of trees. I mean, we have we have a mix. Lots of other things we do. Um, we also every year apply to be a tree city USA, and that's through the National Arbor Day Foundation. And it's just a designation that you get um, for meeting certain criteria. <clears throat> so for to, to earn it, you have to have a, a, a tree ordinance, which we do have a tree ordinance in Pendleton. Uh, you have to have a tree board, which of course we're here tonight for the tree board. Um, the community has to spend at least $2 for every person in Pendleton on trees. So $2 per capita is what they say. And our population is around 
4,300 people. Um, so just, you know, double that, and that's how much money we should be spending on trees over here. Um, we also have to do an Arbor Day proclamation and celebration. And they've been a little lenient on the celebration this past year, and I anticipate them being lenient on the celebration this year as well because of COVID. Uh, but really the celebrations, um, at a minimum, we have to do the proclamation and then kind of get together and plant. We usually plant a tree somewhere. We've been doing it on school property or park property. Um, and, you know, we get the kids to come out. We talk about how to plant a tree properly and that sort of thing. So those are kind of the, the big things that we do during the year for the Arbor De or the Tree City USA designation. Uh, we've gotten it. We, we've been a tree city for 10 years now total because we did some of it um, back when we first had the tree board. <coughs> and then we've done it for the, at least the last five years um, that we've reinstated that tree. Wanda Tree City USA. They have my favorite designation of all called the Growth Award, which I always cringe when I say it. I'm like, ew, it's so gross. <laughs> but they have a Growth Award. Um, the Growth Award is kind of if, if tree boards go above and beyond that basic criteria for being Tree City USA, then we can do the Growth Award. So we've gotten that, I think, almost every year since 2015 as well. Um, they have um, several different categories of projects that you can choose from and you earn points based on the type of project it is. So you have to earn like a minimum of I don't know if it's 10 or 20 points, but um, if you want to earn that designation then you know take the projects and earn the points. Um, and usually they're they're attainable and every year we've done something to get them. Uh, so it's been it's again a fun board to be on. Also has an R come and do like pruning classes for us where we've been able to go out and um, you know someone from DNR shows us how to properly prune a tree and that was that was a lot of fun. That was fun. We had the tree department come and learn. Um, you know, so our guys out in the field are pruning the trees properly. Um, you know, DNR has also come out and physically showed us how to properly plant a tree. Uh, last year we got a grant plant the 300 trees um, for that Arbor Day celebration for the tree recovery tree project that we did. Um, that's what we had the volunteer. We had over 150 volunteers on one day and all of a sudden we came over here and all the trees. That was a, a really great project that we did. So we try to meet once a month. Um, we've been kind of struggling with our meeting times getting a quorum. So we tried to do tonight and you know if we still are you know going month to month and we're not getting a quorum we might try to modify the meeting time and date again to see if we can find something that does not have everyone. It just makes it hard to get projects done. It just makes things so, um, I think anything else. Before we go into business, do you guys have any questions? About the service forestry committee, and anything you want to say about it today? Well, I, I can remember a long time ago when it was called the Pendleton Tree Committee, and I they said like back in the nineties, and uh, Charlie Doherty actually kind of got it going, and um, and it kind of then it, it then it kind of did fade away. But um, there's been so many improvements since the urban forestry, you know, urban forestry uh, was started, restarted again, so many ways that uh, you can improve your job of being on this committee. So much backing from the town council over the years, um, so much more. And I'm just comparing to what it was like when I was on the tree committee back it was 20 years ago. So much more um, help and support from the DNR. Um, it's just, it's just been so much better and <clears throat> it continues to get better. And I just was thinking the other day when uh, Denise emailed and said we're going to have another meeting, I was thinking back to when we did the tree recovery thing last year in October. 
if that would have happened 20 years ago, there's no way that we could have done as much as was done on that day. So it just gets better every year. And I think we'll enjoy being on the committee because you, you see, um, sometimes it takes so long on committees to see all the work you put in to actually see it in, you know, in a working order, but you can see that here on this committee and Rachel's done a wonderful job. Taylor does a wonderful job and you're going to enjoy it. I'm, I'm sure you will. If you go to the town's website, uh, we have an urban forestry committee page or it's like a section of the website. <clears throat> and in that section, there is our uh, tree care manual and it talks about, you know, everything tree related. Taylor was the one that really probably wrote the book of it and put it all together. It's a really great document. Um, and that does need to be updated as things change over time. We haven't done an update since we've written it. And that was, I think we approved it in like 2017 or something. So say it's been three or four years. Yeah. Um, and we did that intentionally. Our old ordinance used to have the tree species that we were allowed to plant in the ordinance. And that's a little more difficult to change because you have to go to readings with the council and all that thing. So we pulled all the kind of things that can change quickly over time. You know, maybe you don't want to plant ash trees anymore because it's an ash borer, but that was a recommended tree in the ordinance. So we pulled all that out, put it in a, a tree manual that we can update whenever we want. We don't have to have approval from the council if we change our tree species list. Um, so that makes it a little easier for our board and our staff. Um, but if you guys do take a, a dive into that, it, it, at the very end, it's probably the part that I use the most, which is our approved street tree list. So if you have a, a neighbor that says, Carol, like I want to plant some trees in, you know, along Main Street or whatever, then you can say, oh, we'll go to this document. It'll tell you, you know, which ones are okay and all that stuff. And it, it'll tell you the right tree for the right space, the right um, kind of plant usually. And that sort of thing. So are the new additions like current plan, are they using that manual then? Are they selecting trees from that? Whenever they come to us with their landscape plan you know check it to make sure mm -hmm. they're using appropriate trees for it um our landscaping ordinance is lacking right now um but we're making sure that with the video update that we're having more language about street trees and landscape plans and that. Mm -hmm. so but yeah then it will refer back to that training we'll make sure we're selecting mm -hmm. the appropriate trees anyway so that's just a little uh, overview of urban forestry. And then of course, if you guys have any questions along the way, um, you can always give us a phone call or send us an email and we're happy to help get you the information. Um, I did tell Julia and Carol, you know, you're, you've been on some other, other board commissions and you know, you'll get your current email address and then you'll get um, access to Google Drive for the urban forestry community too. All right, so I am just going to go into old business right now. Oh, another side note, there are meeting minutes and agendas from past meetings that are also available on the town's website. So if you do want to go back and kind of look at what's been done in the past on the board, uh, you are more than welcome to go do that. So for tonight, um, I just wanted to give you guys an update about our tree 2020 Tree City USA application. Um, I did get that submitted to this uh, to the Arbor Day Foundation on December 17th. It was not a 2021, it was a 2020. And our total expenditure per capita was $17.48. So we were well above that $2 per person. And that includes any tree removals that we've done, um, any tree planting projects we've done, if we've done any pruning. Um, I did not count, which would have made our expenditure skyrocket, but we, our electric department, has invested in a company that is going through and doing tree trimming along our um, electric easements. So technically, I can include that as part of our Tree City USA expenditures, but I knew we were going to more than meet what we needed, so I did our total amount that we spent was the 75,000 
$86. We planted 314 trees. We removed 24 trees and I had logged, we, we took, kept track of 935 hours of volunteer time over the past year. A lot of that had to do with that Arbor Bay um, recovery planting project that we did. And then I did apply for us to get the growth award for 2020. And I submitted for the management inventory system. Um, and that was because we re um, inventoried our, our public trees. Um, and then, let me see, I got kind of lost. So we purchased, okay, we did. So the management inventory system, we did uh, purchase a program called. Um, TreeKeeper. And TreeKeeper is a mapping software for us where we can go in and see exactly where trees are planted at Pendleton. And you can click on a point and it'll tell you what type of tree it is, the diameter, um, the health of the tree, and if it's recommended for removal, like it was a priority one or priority two. So that helped us earn points. And then, of course, updating that tree inventory um, helps us earn points. And we usually find out in early March if we've earned the designation or not, which I have no reason to think we won't get it. So when you, does the, does the town actually budget money for, or is it, I mean, it sounds like a lot of the expenditures are kind of just city department employees. Yes. They don't actually look and say, okay, I'm gonna have this much money for the trees. No, we, we don't currently have a line item for the you know, the urban forestry committees. Um, there is a budget for trees if we want to plant trees, mm -hmm. um, but you know, we don't have a designated you know, line from yeah. the council. And I think up in, we have never as a committee had an issue with that so far. Mm -hmm. Anytime we've wanted to spend money, we've always been able to find the money mm -hmm. you know, by asking council and they, you know, they find a way to help us do the projects that we want to do. So, you know, unless the board at some point has a challenge with something that they want to accomplish, I think, you know, I think we're at my recommendation would be let's leave it as it is right now until we come we run into something where we think we need a, a budget. And there are, there's a lot of grant money out there if you know where to look mm -hmm. for it. And and Rachel knows where to look for it. And as I said before, we have so much uh, support from DNR, particularly um, Terry. Yes, I mean she's just wonderful, and there always seems to be a way, yeah. you know, that you can get what what you feel like you need. Yeah. So. We definitely figure it out. I think one thing we could do in the future is to maybe um, start bringing in some revenue would be. In our ordinance currently, we do say that if you want to plant a tree um, in your right of way, you need to get a permit from the town. Mm -hmm. And we don't we don't do that right. We don't enforce that part of the ordinance, um, and that's it's just not been a priority. But that could be something that we do in the future, and then we charge a fee for processing that permit. And that would really just be checking to make sure that someone is you know a, a resident is planting the right tree. You know, because after the tornado, there were a lot of people who started planting trees in the right of way again, mm -hmm. and it kind of made me cringe at times because they were planting either maples or trees that were under power lines that end up being a maintenance issue for us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but I guess that whenever that becomes a priority, that is something we can start. They probably don't even think to ask either. No. So there would have to be an education component yeah. that goes along with it, and, and a lot. And I just don't think staff wise we are capable of really doing a good job at that right now. But maybe down the road, if you know we end up getting more staff or we decide it, it is an issue and a priority, and we at least have the tools to implement it. Um, some communities make um, tree trimmers register with the town. We used to make people do that, um, and that kind of went away. And but there's a fee that if you want to trim trees, you have to be a show that you're a certified arborist or you know, just certain regulations to make sure that when people are coming in to do tree trimming in the town and they're doing it properly instead of creating maintenance issues for homeowners or the town in the future. Mm -hmm. so that's in the right of way, correct? Or is it for personal, private? 
it could be either way. It depends on you know what the board would want to do with it. You know, I would recommend probably making it the right of way thing to begin with. And then if something is an issue later on on private property, we can extend it to private property. But that's again if it becomes an issue. I don't think we've even hit quite yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just went through a little tornado and we really didn't have to make any decision with that. And we didn't all have the time to do it. Education on the tree ordinances and everything, I think it's, it will be an important thing. I know that's, you know, especially, you know, what we have online underneath the urban forestry, everything. But, you know, the little, um, I'm assuming you do some of the things on, on email for the town account. You know, I think it might be. That might be one of the spots, especially come kind of spring or something. It might a real short education and maybe refer to the, you know. And are we are we still looking for articles that we can put online? Or I, mean, I think that's what we'll have to kind of talk about when we get the bigger group yeah. together. Is really what are the goals for this year? Yeah. What do we want to do? Um, Okay, so for the 2021 Tree City USA application, um, like I already kind of went over, there's those four standards that we have to meet. We have to be a tree board, have a tree care ordinance, have a community forestry program with a budget of at least $2 per capita, have an Arbor Day observance. I don't know why that took me up for a minute, and a proclamation. And then for that growth award, uh, they have categories where you pick projects, which their categories are now building the team, measuring trees and forests, planning the work, performing the work, and the community framework. Um, I will send out some more information about those uh, categories and the different projects that go along with them. Um, and then I will likely just send out an email to the group that says, hey, there's some homework for us to work on, and for the next meeting, let's have some ideas. We have some money left over for a grant from a grant from DNR still. Um, the grant total was $40,000 that we got from DNR. Uh, it was actually $20,000. And then the town pitched in five, the park pitched in five, and the South Madison Community Foundation pitched in 10. So it was a total project of $40,000. And we have about $21,000 remaining. Yes. So with that money, we can do tree planting projects um the spring and this fall if we would like to uh, which we do we need to spend that money and get it uh, get it spent um, one of the projects um, that we know we will do with this money is franklin street and we're hoping to get community crossings funds from the or from um, indot to do a reconstruction of franklin street we had a public meeting for it last night um We've already submitted the application and we're hoping to hear back from um, in that fairly soon to see if we're moving forward on that. So um, once we get that project constructed, we'll come in and do the tree plantings on that. So we'll set aside some of that 21,000 for Franklin Street, but the rest of it we can target some areas in the community and do some tree plantings there. So I would say in the next month or so, maybe. When you're driving around town if you see some areas that you know either have lost trees because of the tornado or you just think are lacking uh, trees uh, let me know and we can start putting a plan together on you know, where we want to do some infill on trees another thing if you can think about this in the next month too uh, I'd like to get some committees going on the Urban Forestry Committee. Uh, last year, we had a lot of talk about the Memorial Tree Program, and I don't know if we want to continue trying to um, work with the park on updating that program, or if the park is now, if, we, if the park is in a good place with the Memorial Tree. So I'm not sure, because now we've had a transition with Denise, too. Um, so I don't know if anyone at the park is really managing the Memorial Tree Program. So, you know, is it a good opportunity to have our board maybe manage it or, you know, I don't know. There's lots of things to think about. <laughs> no others. Right. Yeah. Is that about 40 trees in line for this fall or spring and fall? 
Yeah. So that need to get planted. Uh, yeah. So. so maybe that's something um, we can talk about um, at our next meeting too to make some decisions on. Um, it would also be really helpful if we could form a small Arbor Day committee um, with the board. Uh, what usually ends up happening is um, like staff ends up pulling the, the Arbor Day celebration together and we really have our hands full with a lot of uh, development projects, the subdivisions, the um, a lot of we're, we're obviously experiencing a ton of growth in Pendleton and in the Pendleton area lately. So if we could get some additional hands on deck with the planning for future events, we know we need to do an Arbor Day something, even if it's a very small event, it's not anything that we have to have a huge celebration on, but just maybe if we got together and planted a tree, we need a location, we need a tree. Um, you know, I can figure out how to fund the tree, but you know, if we can get a couple people together to plan an event, that would be super helpful. So, anyway, think about those things in the next month, and if you feel like you could uh, devote some time to those things, um, we would love to put you on a committee for that. And then, like I said, I'll end up sending out an email to the rest of the group for everyone to take a look at. And it's still not working. That's my one that does work. So I appreciate you guys coming today. And if there's anything else you guys want to talk about, I'm more than happy to talk about it. So on the memorial, I know we put a lot of talk in it. Was it last year or the year before that we put a lot of talk into the memorial? It might have been a year before. I think so because I think it was just hard. <clears throat> yeah, after the tornado went through and everything was kind of. Um, <clears throat> my question is on that. Denise, you can help me on this, but I think when you purchase a memorial tree, there's a designated amount in included in that cost to the person who wants to do it for some type of signage, right? Am I correct? Yeah. Uh, just for the, the mulch, the digging, uh, and the sign is $25. Okay. So, because money is going to be an issue on, you know, we, it, it, it'll be an issue since we don't have any entrance other than that. So, I think we need to get maybe that. If somebody wants to plant a memorial tree, but not particularly on any of the town property, which could happen, I suppose. Um, then we have to have something set up where we could, you know, kind of put that in the price of the tree. Um, but I think the main thing is we're just going to need to sit down and decide what type of signage. We even went beyond signage. We, I don't know, there were other things. We talked about mapping it online. Yeah. We talked about doing a some type of a sculpture. And sometimes the, the signage that you put on a tree can damage the tree or right. it's stolen or lost and, and it's difficult to keep track of. So maybe there's a something else where your name gets engraved on it rather than kind of a the tree. And so it's just, you know, lots of options and I think figuring out what works best for our community is one of the things that I thought was really cool when we talked about it was <clears throat> the person who donated the tree to a family member. So, and part of the family got to live around the land, and there was a way that they could go, you know, online and see. There would be a picture of it in a location. And um, I think that would be real mean, meaningful mm -hmm. to our family members that are around. So. And that could probably be done pretty easily with this, the new software we've got. Rachel. I think we could do it. Um, I don't know if we would do it with our tree keeper software, but there is a like a mapping program that we can use. It's the same one that we use for our uh, the walking the uh -huh. memorial. Site. Oh yeah, walking tour. Right, and we added the remember when we scanned in stuff in the museum uh -huh. for each of the different marker sites. And Photos that you can pull out and things like that. That's a free program that we can do. So, yeah. Yeah. so, but it would be, you know, we would probably need, I don't know if we'd need some type of a studio.
student, like an intern or a high school student that could, you know, do the, get all that in the program for us. What about the markers and the, some of them that are not in good shape now? I mean, for the trees, for the, for the memorial trees that have already. I think a lot of them have been replaced. Um, yeah, especially after we don't need to have lost those turned in. Yeah. So, the last I was thinking with all the, the signs have been in there, are pretty good shape of under them. Okay. Cars out there. Yeah. Yeah. They'll turn them in. And those of them are in the park, aren't they? Are they all in the park? I think I don't, I don't know if they have any in the cemetery or not, but. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure if they do. I think there's a few down the sports park. Yeah. 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 But not. I mean, after last October, there's, I think there's several more down there now. And that walking trail, yeah. they're, they're wanting a few more. And then even encouraging uh, planning for the golf course. Remember when we planted that one in the golf course when we first got started? Mm -hmm. Or we planted two of them. I think so. I wonder if they're still there. You should go check. You can see them right from that patio. Yeah. It's up there. Yeah. Oh, so this is a little bit off subject, but yet related. Um, we have a cemetery survey that's out on Facebook right now because we've had some uh, customers approaching us for cemetery stuff about doing uh, what's called tree pots and doing like a tree burial in the park. And we don't know how to handle that yet. You know, we don't have anything set up or in place for these tree pot type things. Or, uh, so we're kind of exploring that. So maybe at some point or course, you can chime in on, on that topic. I've seen it on Facebook. Have you guys seen it? The tree pot? The or tree the, yeah. The tree it's, pot. It's a cool concept. I might have it. I might be able to pull it's, it, it Look under Susan Markey. Oh, I don't know if I can on Facebook, but I can probably just Google tree pot. If you can't, I think I'm still out on the phone. But oh my gosh, when I saw that, I thought, so I don't know if they're this big, because these kind of creep me out a little bit. <laughs> it's kind of different. <laughs> but, hmm. I mean, I don't really know if that's what we're talking about, because I don't know how we bury a tree like that in our cemetery right now, and if we, if our ah. guys would feel comfortable. Did you see this one now? No. So that's what I mean. I no, that's of, huge. That kind of creeps me out. <laughs> well, what's, I don't know. Is that, that a it, person? I think so. Wow. Body in there? Yeah. Well, it's... Or, I, I, I think race, it's. I, I think, think just gonna be ashes. Well, I think. Ashes. I think it's ashes. Think it's ashes. Well, that's a lot of ashes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's ashes. I mean, look, look at that. Is it? Oh, 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 Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, yeah. No. No. Okay. Well, we can't vote. <laughs> we can't vote. <laughs> it's a good thing. We all need to sleep on that one. Oh, that. Yeah, I can tell you guys how you're feeling. Yeah. Well, like it says, say goodbye to Coffins. <laughs> So, yeah, I have like these terrible thoughts of like us getting this tree pod and then like our guys trying to plant it. And oh, like, oh, yeah. No, I'm no. Everything uh -oh, yeah. I see a movie. I see a movie out of this. <laughs> wow. Oh, well, okay, we'll put that on. Okay. Anyway, we have a nice little survey online and we're asking people for input on what types of burials they're interested in in the, in the park. Or in the sorry, not the park, but in the cemetery. There's a lot of interesting tree pods. Yes, there are. <laughs> anyway, not on our agenda yet, but I think doing some type of tree planting in the cemetery is long term would be a really good thing for our community to look at doing. I do too, regardless of if it's a tree pod thing or if it's just trees in general. Um, well, there's a lot of trees that were planted all at the same time. Yeah. And there's and they're yeah. they're starting we've to die. removed a lot in the yeah. last five years. Yeah. So. yeah. And then we have the newer part too. So. So. And there's some that have been removed in these parts yeah. too. Really? Yeah. So um, and it's really difficult in the cemetery because you know if you plant a tree, lots that we have laid out in the whole cemetery right now, you know, that takes some of the lots out of commission basically and we can't sell them anymore. So we have to plan for that tree to grow. You know, so there's a, a interesting planning component to where this would go in a park or in on a park cemetery. That area on the Bowles Park Drive. I'm so, I'm changing this. Carol's funny. Yeah, I'm welcome. Carol's not passing. Um, on Bowles Park Drive, you know where all the by the new soccer field area and everything where they all the trees it's kind of wetlands in there though i think uh, is, is that all going are all those trees going to be removed or that the last time i heard the overheard this park talking about it it kind of sounded that way that they were wanting to remove it and eventually put parking in the parking lot in there but we haven't seen any actual plans or anything so i think the first goal is just cleaning out the dry right. stuff it's going to be a huge thing to do yeah because it's that tornado trash that uh -huh. area. Yeah. Uh, and it is a very low. Yeah, it's it's soggy. Yeah. yeah. It's really soggy. I don't know if it's actually, I don't think it's wetlands, but it's soggy. It is, it is soggy for sure. Part of those trees, that's why I think they died because it's so wet yeah. there. Yeah. 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 I'd like to see more trees on State Street slash 38 going west. I think there's a lot of them around. I guess what makes sense to me is we try to fill our most heavily traveled corridors first, and then we start working on our side streets. Right. But State, I mean, because we've lost a lot of trees on State over the years. Mm -hmm. Which we, we have. We've, we've done a good job of planting some new trees, but we need to do some new trees. Right. There's a pretty big driveway out there, isn't there? Yeah. Where you could safely set them back where they're not right on the road. What about paths walking towards like Pine Clearance mm -hmm. from like the lowest branch to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, 
That's an interesting part of this committee too. You learn all these um, rules and regulations, and mm -hmm. you know, even on our here in town on the street railways, there's all kinds of guidelines that you have to go by. You know, mm -hmm. and it's interesting. Mm -hmm. it really is. Um, also, if you guys see any training opportunities related to trees that you'd like to do. Um, and if there's a fee associated with it, we can usually get it covered um, so that we can attend that training for free. So just let me know if something comes up. And I usually send out opportunities through email too if I see something that might be good for our group to participate in. I think last year or two years ago, we went to, <clears throat> didn't you go? It was me, you and Heidi, maybe. We went to a Arbor Day, or not Arbor Day, but the Arborist Association. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Training and they had an urban forestry component to it that <clears throat> you know, that's that interesting. Yeah. And they do like a oh what is it called? A, a trade show type thing with it too, where Davy has their cool new toys and give you free stuff. Give you free. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So but you learn. All right, well, I don't have anything on the, else unless you guys have anything that you want to talk about. And maybe hopefully that gets reduced to slow for the next meeting and we can talk about make some decisions for the year. I'm pretty flexible with my time, so whatever works for everyone else is probably okay. Very good. Monday nights are not good. I, I know, we won't do a Monday yeah. night meeting, don't worry. Right. Usually stick to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. All right. Well, sure. thanks, Shanna, for participating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't have nightmares with tree pod. <laughs> <laughs> I think Carol is for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs>